Shabbat Shalom from Congregation Baruch Hashem in San Antonio, Texas. We are so happy that you are with us and blessings to all of you. 
Well, the world celebrates Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. People ask questions. My inbox is filled. Why is, uh, is that at this particular time? The Bible does say that Yeshua died on Passover. It says that. And it says that he rose three days later. This year, Passover falls on April 22nd. And we need to find the, we need to, to follow the Bible commandments. But it's okay. We could celebrate his resurrection every day. Understand that. I remember one time somebody said, it's your birthday. Here's a cake. I said, eh, my birthday's in three months, but let's eat. So, <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is that we, though the world is celebrating at a diff different time, we follow the biblical mandate. And we will celebrate Passover. Three days later, we will celebrate his resurrection. Understand, God is still on the throne, but he encourages the celebration of life and resurrection every day. Shabbat shalom. Mishpocha, family. Um, <clears throat> today I want to read in the book of Psalm 63, 1. Um, it says, you, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. And um, as I was reading this psalm, I remember that um, the times when we were so in love with the Lord, when we first gave our lives to Yeshua and recognized the sacrifice, my husband and I were talking about the sacrifice that he did on the cross. And again, we know that his resurrection is a different calendar. That's why this year doesn't coincide with the Passover feast. But at the end of the day, Yeshua resurrected. Yes. And that's what we're, going, we're celebrating, or we should celebrate every year, every, every day, that he was resurrected. He resurrected. And tonight, um, this psalm is just for us to seek the Lord earnestly. That means with everything that you have, everything that you have. You know, don't lose that desire to really seek the Lord every day with that earnestly. Every morning when you wake up, Lord, I seek you. And don't become complacent in your relationship with the Lord. So even though, um, you know, to that, tonight's Shabbat, we have the partial. Remember that tonight the Lord has something very special for you. In the, in the worship, the praise and worship, the teaching of the word of God. So we have to be alert. Holy Spirit, Raha Kodesh, speak to me tonight. I'm open. Speak to us. Amen? So Shabbat Shalom. A special thanks, a special thanks as we dedicated our Torah. A Polly, stand up, Polly, so people could see you. She actually made this particular painting. Can you see that? It's wonderful. Thank you, Polly. It's, it's a Torah that... The Sephardic tour, it put a lot of heart in there. Thank you, Polly, for doing this. So as we come together, we're going to be talking about Sa'av, the commandment. We're also going to be talking about the Passion Week. We're going to be talking about the seven last words, things that I know that you will truly be blessed. Pastor Human, we love you so much. Can you come grace us with the opening prayer? Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for the, the biggest thing ever anybody can do for us. You put your life for us. The time we was not worthy. Even now, God, I am not worthy. But because of you, I'm worthy of salvation. And you give me this chance to stand in front of you and call you Abba. Thank you for everything. Thank you for this freedom. Thank you for the new life. Thank you for the whatever I lost and you give it to me. Dear Lord, I want today, that's a special day. You bless us again with your blood and wash us one more time, how you want we be, we be that one. Dear Lord, I want to check our hearts one by one tonight. 
and whatever is not yours and you don't want to be in our life, dear Lord, you remove it from our life and make us clean, shiny, how you want and how you are. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Shabbat. Thank you for your righteousness and your kingdom on the earth. Dear Lord, bless us with your soul. One more time, dear Lord, bless us with your salvation. Make us free from whatever is not belong you. In the name of Yeshua and Mashiach, amen, amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Baruch Atai Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hashem Kedoshani from Mishnah Vitzivanu Lishamo Koshafar. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by his commandments and has commanded us to hear the sounding of the shofar. So I'm lighting a candle tonight um, so that we keep the Israelis hostages in our prayers, okay? So it's, it's a reminder here. And to remember and observe the Sabbath. Sabbath. Rukatadonai, Eloheinu Melakalam, a shared kid chano bidvareka, vanatan lanu at Yeshua Mishikehinu, Vitsivanu lehiot, or laolam, ahamein. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in your word and given us Yeshua, our Messiah, and commanded us to be light to the world. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom as well. I'm John. I'll be leading us with the uh, liturgy. And I uh, hope you had a good week. Uh, but i um, ready for Shabbat. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. And to begin the Shabbat, um, what we do is we, we declare God's promises in Hebrew all across the United States on the other side as well. I know that Northern Hemisphere, Southern, everyone... I hope is, is saying what we're going to be saying, and that's the, the Hebrew liturgy, uh, a chance to shake off the rough week or a good week, and uh, these are all based on the Bible, all based on most of the Psalms. So the first one is the uh, Psalms 95, 1 through 3. It's a call to worship. Again, we say it in Hebrew, and uh, it is a beautiful sound when we can hear all of you guys uh, praising God and in his holy language. Um, it's just a gift. And it's a great way to, to honor God on this Shabbat. So this is Lahu. Lahu, Naranana, Ladonai, Naria, Lazur, Yeshenu, Nekada, Pada, Bezorab, Ibirot, Naria, Lo, Ki El Gadol, Adonai, Umela Gadol, Al Ko Elohim. And in English, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us joyfully acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us approach him with thanksgiving and acclaim him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Amen. The next part of the, the liturgy that I'll be leading is the, the Matavu. Um, this is just one of my favorites. Um, again, it's a chance for us to be reminded of how there was this enemy in the Bible that was, his job was to curse Israel 
But after coming over the hill, all he saw was just this, this awesomeness. And uh, it's, I just, anyway, <laughs> the Matavu, uh, just a chance to, to say a blessing over Israel. Mato last part of our liturgy as we are going to face towards Jerusalem. This will be towards our sound booth back here. Um, when we say the Shema, the uh, words are from Devarim 6 verses 4 through 9. Um, we want to close our eyes uh, so that we can hear. It's very important for us to hear what we're saying and believe. And so we close our eyes as a way to concentrate and we pray in the direction of where our Lord and Savior was. So the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta et Adonai Eloheha ve'ho levetka uv'ho nafshaha uv'ho me'odeha ve'hayu hadvarim ha'ele asher nohi mezavha hayom al levavka ve'shinatam levaneha ve'dibertabam ve'shitika ve'veteha uv'lekteha v'derek excuse me uv'shakbeha uv'kumeha uv'shartam la'ot al yedeha ve'hayu latotafot ben eneha Uktaptam al mezuzot beteka uvishareka. Last parts from Leviticus 19:18. Vayikra, veahapta lareka kamoka. And in English, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire, and when you arise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. And the last part was uh, Leviticus, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Uh, right before we transition to the end of our liturgy, we'd like to bless the children. Um, oh, you may be seated. If I could have four guys, uh, two talits, and we'll have the boys on one side, the girls on the other. Um, in case you ever wondered, whenever we say the blessing for the boys, we say like uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Uh, just a reminder, those are from Joseph. And Joseph was born, uh, his kids were born in Egypt, but he still raised them godly and righteous. And, and that's one of the reasons why we say Ephraim and Manasseh, because we want them to be able to follow that tradition of uh, living righteous. We'll pray for the boys first and for the girls. If you're watching online, feel free to extend your hands to your family, uh, kids, and uh, again for the boys. Yesimha Elohim ke Afrahim vehim and for the girls, Yesimek Elohim kesera Rivka Rachel Velea, and for both, Lord, we thank you for the children. We thank you for the boys and girls. We thank you for the blessing they are. We ask, Lord, that you guide them. We ask you, Lord, to have great friends. We thank you, Lord, that you give them wisdom and give them a purity and a desire for righteousness. We thank you for everything that you do, and we ask, Lord that they would only fall, always follow you. Thank you for all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And that concludes this portion of the liturgy. Uh, coming up will be David Gatsky. It's much longer, everyone. All right. I, have a, I hope you had a great week. And then, uh, but then the, we're having Roger Care the tour this particular week, and he's in law enforcement. And they've been going through a lot of bad things here lately, you know, people seem to hate them, they want to cut the budget, they want to sit there and um, eliminate law enforcement, so let, so as Roger comes here, don't you lift up law enforcement as he carries a tour also to the congregation, because without them, who do you call? And we don't call the Ghostbusters, we call 911, <laughs> so, so we need to sit, sit there and call them, I know that even, even the people, even these neighborhoods that are having all these problems, they still rely upon the police to come and help them. So let's keep the law, for, uh, law enforcement in our, in our hearts and minds today as, uh, as, uh, as Roger Kekere is a Torah. If you have a part of the reading today, please come forward. And everyone else, please rise. Even so, Aharon, Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Vea Futsu Oeveha, Vea Nusum Mesaneha, Mehepa Neha, Ki Mition Tetse Torah. Ki mitzion tetze Torah Unevar Adonai Mirushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Leamo Israel, big do who shato. Israel, ve oraita, ve who chabri who han who. Israel, ve oraita, ve who chabri who han who. Ora, 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 alleluia. Ora, 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 alleluia. Ora, 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 alleluia. Ora, 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 ora. Hallelujah. 
Torah is light, Torah is light, Alleluia. Torah is light, Torah is light, Alleluia. Torah, ora, Torah, ora, Alleluia. Torah, ora, Alleluia. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Zion will go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. Amen. Ya Amon, Baruch ben Roy la Torah. Come forward, Baruch, son of Roy, to the Torah. Baruchut Adonai Hamvorach, Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Vaed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bachar Bani Mikol Hamim, Venatan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who chose us from among all peoples and given us your Torah. Blessed are you, Giver of the Torah. Amen. You may be seated. Today, we're going to be reading Leviticus 6, 1 through 3, and the Hebrew translation and the English translation. It's the same exact numbers, but sometimes uh, it's the same exact words, letter for letter, but sometimes the numbering is different because the numbering uh, came at different times. That was not during the time of Yeshua. So it, it, you might read it verses 8 through 10. But in, if you're reading from the Hebrew translations, it's 6, 1 through 2, or you'll read 6, 8 through 10. It's all the same words, all the same letters. But we'll go ahead and read 6, 1 through 2. By the bell, the name of Shay Lemur, Tavita Rombet, Banav Lemur, Zot Toatola, He Hala Al Muktave Al Hamisberg, Kolhalala Ad Hapoke, the Eshmisberg Tokad Bo. And in English, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the ritual of the burnt offering. The burnt offering itself shall remain where it is, burned upon the altar all night until morning while the fire on the altar is kept going on it. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu Torah temet vechaye olam nata betocheinu Baruch ata Adonai noten ha Torah Bless you, Lord God, King of the universe, who uh, give us a Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, giver of the Torah. Please rise. Vizot ha Torah, Asher Samoshe, Lifne Bene Israel al Piadohonai, Beyad Moshe. And this is a Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. 
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who selected good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, O Lord, who chooses the Torah, your servant Moses, your people Israel, and prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen. Our Haf Torah this evening comes from Malachi chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Look, I will send to you Eliyahu, the prophet, before the coming of the great and terrible day of Adonai. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land which, with complete destruction. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natalanu Mashiach Yeshua, vahadi brot shel habri hachadasha. Baruch ata Adonai, noten habri hachadasha. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Shabbat Shalom. Tonight's Brit uh, Harashah reading will be from uh, Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 17. Next, Yochanan's Talmidim came to him and asked, Why is it that we and the Perushim fast frequently, but your Talmidim don't fast at all? Yeshua said to them, Can wedding guests mourn while the bridegroom is still with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast. No one patches an old coat with a piece of unshrunk cloth, because the patch tears away from the coat and leaves a worse hole. Nor do people put new wine in old wineskins. If they do, the skins burst. The wine spills, and the wineskins are ruined. No, they pour new wine into freshly prepared wineskins. And in this way, both are preserved. Amen. Please rise. Eight Chayim here, La Machazikimba, Vetom Cheha, Mehushar, Derecheha, Darchenoam, Vehon Tiboteha, Shalom, Ashivenu Adonai. Elecha venashuva Chahadesh, Chahadesh yamehenu Chahadesh yamehenu hukekedem It is a tree of life for those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come and renew our days as of old. Amen. You may be seated. And again, I just want to say really quickly before Dr. Bully comes up, we have a wonderful, uh, for those of you who haven't been here in the past couple of weeks or three weeks, we have a wonderful new ark, which was a labor of love by one of our, uh, one of our beloved families here. And I've already, you know who they are. And we also have a... And it just, it's just, it's so wonderful. So just such a blessing to have the ark. And it's also the, the Torah that we have, the new Torah that we have in there. We wouldn't have been able to get it by ourselves. It was really the hand of God in that because we had, it was a raffle, believe it or not. I mentioned it before, it was a raffle 
where we, we put our names in there and we got it. And so we've been truly blessed at, at Baruch Hashem here with this wonderful, with this wonderful ark and the wonderful uh, Sephardic tour that you saw open in there. So it's, just, it's, it's a time of blessings, and so we're very grateful. And at this time, we're going to have Dr. Bully share some words with us. There are those who argue against the trustworthiness of the New Covenant writings because of supposed, quote, Hebrewisms. They claim, for instance, that there are word plays that only work in Hebrew, and therefore the Brit Chadashah must have been written in Hebrew, and therefore the Greek manuscripts are unreliable. One favorite supposed proof is a quote of a quote of an early believer named Papias, who said, Matthew set in order the oracles, Lagia, in the Hebrew language or style. But does this quote refer to Matthew's gospel or possibly another work of Papias, such as his five volume exposition of the sayings of the Lord even if it does refer to the gospel, what exactly does that mean? The language known as Hebrew or the language of the Hebrew people, for instance? The vast majority of the Jews of the Second Temple period spoke Koine Greek. Many of the Jews in Israel also spoke Aramaic. Hebrew was, of course, the language of the synagogue and temple. Saying Metityahu wrote in the Hebrew language may refer to the language of the temple, but no one knows for sure because it is obvious that the earliest ma Hebrew manuscripts of Matthew are all translations from around A.D. 1380. Matthew wrote his account of the life of Yeshua for a Jewish audience. Could that be a better translation of what Papias said? That Matthew wrote in such a way that the Hebrew people would understand that Yeshua is the Messiah prophesied about throughout the Tanakh. Matthew quotes from the Hebrew scriptures more than any of the other gospel writers. Over 60 times he quotes from the prophetic passages of the Tanakh demonstrating how Yeshua fulfilled each one of them. A second argument about so-called Hebrewisms is from Matthew 1, verse 21, which says, you shall call his name Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. Some claim this is a wordplay that proves Matthew was written in Hebrew. What it proves is that Hebrew insights can help us understand all of God's word, not only the Tanakh. There are word plays in the original Greek of the Brichad writings that will only work in Greek. We see an example of this in Matthew 16, 18, where Yeshua said, I, emphatic, I also tell you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my community, and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. Peter in Greek is petras, meaning a rock or stone such as a man might throw. The rock which Yeshua promised to build his community upon is petra, a rock that is massive. The community of Messianic believers is not built upon a rock someone may throw away, but upon the bedrock of Kepha's profession of faith that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Another Hebrewism pointed to at times as so-called proof, the New Covenant writings were originally written in Hebrew, is the liberal use of the Greek word kai. Kai is a conjunction that equates with the Hebrew prefix of av. Use of kai, however, does not prove the Brit Chadashah was written in Hebrew. It does support the fact that it was written by Hebrews. All of the oldest and best manuscript evidence 
shows the Lord had his new covenant documents written in the international language of the Roman Empire, everyday Greek. This would allow it to be easily understood and quickly disseminated throughout the entire empire. Yes, the Brit Hadashah was soon after translated into numerous languages, but it was originally written in Greek. We must always bear in mind that the Greek New Testament is what God has preserved for us. And all the evidence that we have indicates that it was his choice to transmit the New Covenant scriptures to us in Greek. This was written, it was written and preserved in the common everyday Greek of the world at large so that the world at large could hear the message of salvation in Yeshua that is for the world at large. As John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Bowley. So I have a few announcements for next week. First of all, um, we're having our ladies' Bible study next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And also, uh, we're having a testimony. Actually, Miss Polly, the artist, is going to be giving her testimony. I'm going to have a Bible study also. So please come at 7 p.m. this upcoming Tuesday. She has a beautiful testimony to share with the women. Also, uh, we're going to need volunteers for Passover, and um, before you know it, it's going to be here very soon, and we're going to need uh, volunteers that, um, not just that day, but before, if you want to help us with Passover, you can talk to uh, Mrs. Ann. Can you send that beautiful lady right there, the beautiful lady, blue dress? And Passover is a huge event. We have possibly the largest Passover in South Texas, so there's a lot of work that day and the day before and the week before. So if you want to help us, please go up to her and let her know how you can help. There's plenty to do. But also, I don't know if you have noticed, you have seen the entire building, but we have an upper chapel upstairs. Did you know that we have another chapel on the second floor? Okay, so we did some remodeling and all we need now is to paint okay and we want to paint it not take two three weeks to finish there's a lot of work if you know how to paint it can be male or female uh, on Tuesday of next week uh, and Wednesday also Thursday you can come and help us finish painting the apple apple chapel so if you want to have uh, be part of that please let me know at the end of the service and we have plenty of paint, plenty of brushes. All we need is volunteers, okay? So we can get it done. This is for Yeshua. We have services on Saturday there in that place. So we made it bigger because there's a lot of people coming, and we need plenty of room, but we have to paint it, okay? So thank you so much, and we'll see you Tuesday, ladies, at 7 p.m. Shalom. Thank you, Reverend Sinmari. And then... The other thing, a quick thing before I forget, is we have uh, the children's the children's ministry, Yeshua's children. The the Wills family has have been doing wonderful. It would be nice if you want to get involved, if you want to see what's going on. I'm telling you, there's a lot of care and love that goes into the children's ministry here at Baruch Hashem. I see it. It is above and beyond, and it is something that is. It's just, it's really wonderful. And if you are one of the parents and you want to be a part of that ministry, please see me after service. And just, if you want to put your name on there to help out the Willis family, to just help them. uh, In Hebrew, usually in Hebrew school, you have the teacher, the the mora and the mora, and you have an assistant. They call them madrich or madricha. And if you are somebody who is a, a parent, or even if you're, just someone who wants to who wants to help out. Who and, you know, if you've been here with the congregation, you want to help out to uh, with that ministry. And again, it's just it really is wonderful. My, my, I'm just always surprised by by the 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 thought and care that goes into that program. And if we could give them a hand, if you want to be a madrich or madricha, and 
I'm not saying to do it every single week. I'm saying if the more people we get, the more we can rotate the, you know, if you're a parent or if you're an older sibling, that might be ideal to go and help out your younger siblings to learn the word. And, it, and we'll just get that rotation going on. Come and talk to me afterwards if you want to be a madrich or a madricha for that program. And again, for the chapel, if you come on Saturday mornings, we have tonight, the Friday night service, we have Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock. That was led by uh, Rabbi Carl. Rabbi Carl is now in Abilene. And we're going to be continuing, we're going to continue to pray for his ministry over there, continue to just, he, need, he needs, they need our, our prayers, so continue to pray for Carl and Kathy that the Lord uh, ha- gives them favor and grace upon their ministry. They have been really very wonderful, and they are gone, but they are still uh, part of us. They're still near and dear to our hearts, and, and so keep on praying for them. Uh, on Saturday mornings, I am going to be uh, taking over. I, the last week, what, the last week was the first week, and we're going to be... If you want to learn some liturgy, we're going to be doing some more, uh, some a little bit more liturgy there. If you're going to see a little bit more, we're going to get a little deeper in the word. word. Dr. Bully has a few more insights. I mean, this was, I, and I'm not just saying, Dr. Bully, he's a cool guy. I like him very much. But, I mean, I think so, some thumbs up. I'm in. So we love Dr. Bully, right? <laughs> he's, he is a nice guy. He's a wonderful person. It's not an act. It's for real. <laughs> he, some, for some people, it's an act, not for him. He, he's, a, he's a wonderful, wonderful person, and I steal some of his jokes, too. But I will say that the teachings that he gives, y'all might not realize it, like the teaching that he just had right there, that was, a, that was fantastic. That's something you see in seminary. That really was, was really wonderful. And so sometimes you might need to go back and, and watch it over again on the live stream and just, okay, what is he doing too? It's really, I, I, I think it was, it was really wonderful. And I just think that we're really blessed to have some strong teachers here. On Saturday mornings, Dr. Bully teaches once again. We, we're like, he's like a toothpaste, uh, a toothpaste tube that gets squeezed out. And all the, so we get all the knowledge out of him. So he's, he's pretty exhausted by, by Saturday noon. And then on and then, I, and then I'll, I'll come and I, I might say a couple of words afterwards. I'll just say probably just, you know, good job and just put a few more things. And then I will also be teaching. We have a, a whiteboard upstairs. So I think I'm going to be writing some Hebrew, a little bit more Hebrew, and trying to incorporate that. That's, that's kind of the goal. And so if you want to come Saturdays at 10 a.m., we have that and we have fellowship afterwards where you don't have to drive late at night. I know some people come from very far away if you want to come also on Saturdays. Uh, if you're online, I encourage you to come on Friday nights. I encourage you to come, if you can, on Saturday mornings. You could drive in the middle of the day. You don't have to worry about hitting any deer or anything like that. So that's wonderful. Then at 2.30, if that's not enough, at 2.30, Rabbi Gill is a gifted teacher. Yeah, I hear some woo. I'm in. Rabbi Gill is a very gifted teacher. He goes, through, he goes through the different aliyot, the different sections of the Torah uh, Parsha. He goes in depth. It's really wonderful. It is, it is uh, fantastic. I mean, we're just so blessed to have strong teachers here who know the Word of God, and it's just, it truly is a blessing. So we have tonight, obviously, it's Friday at 7.15, tomorrow at 10 a.m., and also at 2.30 for the Sephardic. And, si ustedes hablan español, el servicio a las dos y media es bilingüe. Así que ustedes pueden aprender un poco. Okay, so at uh, 2.30. Amen. All right. I just said, just said, if you speak Spanish, you know someone that speaks Spanish, that service is bilingual. And so, there's several, there's several thing, uh, opportunities to learn here. There's several opportunities for fellowship. It really is a wonderful place here at Baruch Hashem. And if this is your first time, oh, before I say that, one more thing. We tore down the walls. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. But we tore down the walls. If there was a few people that helped out, again, Rebbitz and Mari, Linda were kind of overseeing the project, spearheading the project. And I, I want to recognize the people who were also helping out. We had some of our workers, uh, Jose and Brandon, who, were, who they usually work at the building, and they helped out. Also, my... My father-in-law, uh, he says no. Okay, so never mind. Not my father-in-law. He didn't help out. He didn't do anything. Someone that looked like him 
and dress like him, help help tear down stuff. So, but I won't I won't say him. And also, my wife, who is she's getting some of the things ready upstairs as well for for the service tomorrow. But she helped out as well. And so we had some. Uh, it was a, a, a fun time of drywall and and uh, and uh, axes. If you if you came, if you got to, if you helped out. You would have got to swing an axe here, and it would have been okay. So it was, it was a lot of fun. If this, so it, it's a really wonderful time. I'm glad you're here at Baruch Hashem. And if this is your first time at Baruch Hashem, if you are a guest, please stand up. All right, amen. Just please remain standing real quick, and we'd just like you to say your first name and where you're from. If you're, it's, yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. You just say your name and where you're from. From San Antonio. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. And yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Missa. Yes. From New Braunfels. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Wonderful. San Marcos. Did I miss? Oh, sorry. The, this, the light's right in, my, the, right in my eyes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma From San Antonio, welcome. Yes. From San Antonio? From shirts. All the way from shirts. <laughs> well, th thank you. So uh, you, you, you may be seated. Thank you so much. And again, guys, if I, ever, if I ever miss you guys, just throw something at me up here because I got the spotlight in my eyes. Yes. De Culiacán, Sinaloa. Gracias. Cerquita de la playa, ¿verdad? Sí. Sí, hay mariscos deliciosos, sí, ¿verdad? Okay, yes. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. I'm guessing Texas State, right? Yeah, Texas State, right. Wonderful. Welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Welcome. Yes. Oh, welcome. Yes. From Cashville. Wonderful. I'm in. So everyone's from kind of, kind of the area. We have, again, people from, again, Texas State. Welcome from coming all the way from Texas State. We have some from South Africa. Who's here from South Africa? Oh, she's talking to her. If you're from South Africa, please, it, please stand up. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, we, oh we, we know you. You've been here before. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Welcome again for the, the 30th time, I think. <laughs> okay. It's good to see you. Again, this is, again, Baruch Hashem is, we believe in the Bible, that's from beginning to end. We go back to the original language, and this is why we say so many things in Hebrew. And like Dr. Bully was saying, yes, even the New Testament, it was written in Greek, but it has the, it has the Hebrew culture in it, yes, and that's, that's how it is. If you have any questions, then please ask me, please ask Dr. Bully, please ask uh, Rabbi Roy, any of the leadership that's up here, if you have any questions, we encourage you to join us, if you can join us, for our, our Passover Seder. It's quite wonderful. Try to reserve a ticket there. And at this time, we're going to have Bruce to come and pray for our offering. Shabbat Shalom from Del Rio, Texas. All right. Speaking of Del Rio, we have a Del, Del Rian. Is that what you're called? All right. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, so tonight, before the prayer for the offering, um, I'm going to share some scriptures uh, from uh, 2 Kings. Uh, this is uh, chapter 13, verses 14 through 19. When Elisha got sick with his illness from which he would die, 
King Joash of Israel came down to him, wept over him, and cried, Avi, Avi, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. Then Elisha said to him, Take the bow and arrows. So he took bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Mount your hand on the bow. So he mounted his hand on it. Elisha then laid his hand on the king's hand and said, Open the window to the east. And then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. Then he said, Adonai's arrow of deliverance. Yes, an arrow of, of victory over Aram. You will strike down the Arameans and Aphek until they are demolished. Then he said to them, Take the arrows. And he took them. Then he said, Strike. Then he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. And he struck it three times, then stopped. But the man of God was upset with him and said, If only you had struck five or six times, then you would have annihilated Aram till you have consumed it. But now you will strike Aram only three times. So I read a, an interesting uh, commentary on, uh, on this passage that I think uh, was pertaining to that. And this is, um, it says, The unfaithfulness of man limits the goodness of God. Though Joash did the prophet's bidding, it was without any zeal or fervor, and probably without any earnest belief in the efficacy of what he was doing. God had been willing to give his Israelites complete victory over Syria, but Joash, by his non-acceptance of the divine promise in, it, in its fullness, had checked the outflow of mercy, and the result was that the original promise could not be fulfilled. And we could even see this in the New Testament, in the Brit Haredesha, uh, in Mark chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. You see, uh, then Yeshua began saying to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, among his relatives, and in his own house. He was not able to do any miracle except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was astonished because of their unbelief. So you see, in our lives, we, we, can, we can come to service. We could do everything without any zeal, without our hearts truly being in this. God will still bless you, but you will diminish his blessings in your life. The fullness of what he called you for, you won't ever reach it if you don't do it with all your heart, with all your strength. So please, if you could stand with me for the blessing. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight to offer you our worship, Lord, to offer you our praises, Father, to offer you uh, the things that you've blessed us with, Lord, to return back to you. Father, put it within our hearts, Lord, a seed and a desire to come and, uh, and bless your kingdom, Father, to, to give back, Lord, for, for, uh, for good works, Lord, so that we could bear good fruit, Lord, for your kingdom. Lord, uh, please bless the, the worship tonight, Father. Bless the speakers, Lord. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit, Father. Touch the lives of every person here, Lord, that we would not come out of here the same, but that we would go forward, Father, in your holy name, Yeshua, to spread your gospel to all the ends of the earth. Thank you, Abba, for this night. In your holy name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Let's shake hands, everyone. Tell somebody Shabbat Shalom in the house. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Lord, we're so honored to be in your house tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to come and stand in a place of worship before our Heavenly Father. Amen. Shalom, shalom, Jerusalem.
beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. Just the voices.
be upon you in a thousand generations in your family in your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and be thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is for you he is for you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you this time we're going to go to the Lord in prayer for our petitions and we'll have uh, keep on playing the guitar because we're just going to be playing it we're going to pray right now that the Lord he sees what is needed he sees what is needed in our life he sees what is lacking and we are going to go to him right now in prayer for our needs and we also want to go to the Lord for needs of healing as well. For the healings, we're praying for the needs that may do with relationships or, or, with, or with a career, whatever it may be, direction in life. But we're also praying right now at this specific time for prayer. We're praying for, I've been asked to pray for Elaine, who sits right over here all the time. You see her, she's Brian's mom, and she's... She's full of love and, and full of energy, and, and she's just wonderful. And we're praying for her. She's going to be getting a, trans, a blood transfusion, and just we keep her in our prayers. Again, pray for the Jones right now, their health as well, but they're in a new city right now. But if there's anyone right now, I'm going to do this. We haven't done this in a while. But when I go over, just go ahead and say, as I point in, in your direction, Go ahead and say the name of the person who you want to pray for healing. We're praying together as a community. You can say it out loud. Say it under your breath. But we're just, we're, we're saying these prayers out loud to the Lord. So just go ahead and say their name. Marian Martinez, yes. Their sons in the hospital, his name is Elijah. Yes. Amen. Okay. Okay, we'll again be praying for Gail for her surgery. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. We're going to say, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and also say a traditional prayer as well. And we say, but first let's say, Avinu Shabbat our Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. We pray right now for healing. We thank you for all the wonderful things you've given us, the wonderful foods and medicines and professionals, but those, right now we're coming to you because we want more than that. We want healing that goes beyond that, that refuah shlema, that complete healing, the healing of the body and the healing of the soul of both of them, not just one, but both. And we know that you are capable to do that, you and you alone. We, this is beyond what we could do. And we stand on your on the verse 
by his stripes we are healed. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Elea, Hu Yevarech et HaCholim, HaKadosh Hu, Yevarech Aleich, Rachamim Aleichem, Velachar Leman, Rabu Tamulcha, Sikam, Vayishlach Ehem Eira, Refua, Refua Shlema Min HaShamayim, Refua HaNefesh, Refua HaKuf, Hashtaba Galav, Yizma Karim Benoma, B'Shem Yeshua, Amen. The, may the one who blessed our answers is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Bless and heal those are, who are ill. May the blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send them a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us say, B'Shem Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And at this time, we'll, We'll have some more music as we continue to pray a little bit. Amen. Amen. We thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Hashem. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, praise team, so much. Again, I want to say thank Donovan especially. I mean, they're all wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Donovan, he came in in a, in a pinch. He was here for a Sephardic service. He played violin, and it was just so wonderful. And actually, and I just, I, I would, I just, I'm so blessed when he plays the violin it's just, it's so wonderful. It's just, I mean, I'm blessed when he sings, but it's just, it's wonderful. You hear the pray, the worship through the strings, through the placement of the finger. It's just, it's just so, it's so wonderful, and it's a blessing to be able to worship, praise and worship with you. Thank you. So today, as some people may know, and Rabbi and Rebbe Sin Mahdi mentioned, is... It is a holiday, thank you. It is Good Friday. And, and as Rabbi said, I'm going to reiterate, it's not a biblical holiday to celebrate according to the thing. Hashem, he gave us these holidays. He gave us Passover, and then that's when we, that's when we do this recognition of, of, of Yeshua, of the sacrifice he gave for us and of his resurrection. That's when we do it here at Baruch Hashem. But does that mean that if people are getting together to recognize our Messiah, that you shouldn't recognize the Messiah? No. You could recognize him now, today. You could recognize him on Sunday. You could recognize him uh, on the 4th of July if you want. That's fine, too. You know, it doesn't. So if you're going to go, again, it's not a biblical feast, but there's no prohibition from recognizing God's miracles any time of the year. So there's, that's fine to do that. It's okay to do that. Even if, even if something's on in a, a biblical date, it's still the important thing in Hebrew we say kavanah, the intention. So is it, where's your intention? Is the intention to, to, 
is, is, it, is it to worship God? If the intention is to worship God, there's, then there's nothing. There's, I, I'm, I would not ever say, don't do that. Us here at Baruch Hashem on Passover, which we're going to do on April 22nd, we, that's when we have communion. That's when we have uh, the recognition of Messiah Yeshua. And this is something where we t take very seriously because we have all the symbols of the Passover Seder together. And it, it, it enriches the story. It enriches. Instead of just saying Good Friday, it's a Good Friday. No, this enriches the story. We see what's going on. And whether you celebrate with us or you celebrate somewhere else, I think it's good to keep that, all that context together. If somebody is getting together for, to have potato salad on Sunday and they invite you, go. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, go. If they're having some brisket, no, that's fine. But again, if you're going to have brisket with them, at least come have brisket with us too on Passover. Amen? Amen. <laughs> The Parsha this week is Tzav. And I'm going, to only, I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to let Rabbi Roy have a, a few words at the end. And there's just something that was on my heart. This is actually something I had already planned. And one of the congregants who's not here had, oh, by the way, if there's any children, we do have a, chi a children's uh, ministry upstairs, the Yeshua's children. So if you want to go, uh, if you have kids that are, that are, elementary school age, you could go up there, and they're having uh, fun activities upstairs right now. So you just go to the stairs that are off, uh, off to the left here, and you go up there, and you'll see the kids upstairs. Tzav. Tzav means command. It's, I love this because this word right here, Tzav, in Hebrew you have, in many languages, you have the imperative. The imperative, would say, you could say somebody is, John is writing. Or you could say write. You could say Sarah is reading. Or you could say read. That's an imperative. It's telling you to do something. And Tzav is interesting because it's an imperative form of the verb command. It's saying command. So Hashem is commanding Moshe, Moses, to command. So he's commanding to command. So what you see here is you see that Moshe has this authority, but his authority to command is coming from a higher authority. It's not, it goes beyond his, it goes beyond who Moshe was as a person. Who is Moshe as a person? Moshe was, you could say a lot of things. You could say he's a shepherd. Or a goat herder. He was a murderer. He was someone who was, who was raised in a polytheistic court. Surrounded by Egyptian gods. So someone would say, well, he grew up polytheist. He was a murderer. A polytheist, murderer turned shepherd, turned goat, uh, or in goat herder. That's not anyone who has any kind of authority. Why would you take any authority any commands from somebody like that this person was an imperfect person he said he had a heavy tongue he couldn't when he gave his commands he couldn't even say do this do that the way he would do it he would speak through his brother Aaron and he would tell Aaron and then Aaron would tell him but yet we say Moshe Rabbeinu Moshe Rabbeinu means Moses our, our, our teacher rabbi and why is that because there was something that was bigger than him as a person there was something bigger than Moshe, who is, Moshe is an Egyptian name. Actually, a lot of the L L Levite names are actually Egyptian names. If you look into them, it's very interesting. But Moshe is, th this Egyptian name, it's funny because we say Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, our teacher, and it's coming from an Egyptian, an Egyptian word. And yet we, we hold him in high regard. It doesn't have to do with him as a person. He had a short temper. Yet that was a problem. He had a short temper. So we don't, when we talk about Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe, our, you know, our, our teacher, not, we don't talk about just, oh, Moshe was angry, so we should be angry. Moshe killed a guy, so we should, you know, <laughs> no, we're not saying that. God forbid that. That's not what we're saying. 
We're saying that there was a role he was in. There was a, a, an anointing that was given to him. And let's look at this. It says in Leviticus 8.30, this is part of the Parsha. Again, what, what, what do I mean by Parsha? We read through the Torah, through the entire Torah throughout the year, and then we read corresponding books from the prophets, and this is how they did in the time of Yeshua. And as Messianic believers, we also read corresponding passages from the Brit Hadashah, from the New Testament. So in this Parsha Tzav, it says, Ve'ikach Moshe mishemen hamishcha. So it says he took, Moses took from the anointing oil. So the anointing, here it is, Meshicha, anointing. Anointing means there's something more than who you are. If you work for, if your name's, let's just have a, a, a random, let's say someone's name is Joe. If your name is Joe and you, you like video games or you, you like barbecue and, or whatever, these are your personal things, but you work for UPS. Once you put on that UPS uniform, you're not talking about what you, about that you like video games and barbecue or whatever. You are a UPS. You're representing UPS. If you're putting on a police uniform, you can't let your personal emotions get out of control. And we have a, an officer here. He has to learn a lot of discipline. I'm sure there's many times as a police officer, people talk very rudely to you. I'm sure. And... They still have to be calm, collected, because he's not just being himself. He's representing the San Antonio Police Department. When we have the anointing, when the anointing comes upon somebody, when the anointing is when it's given, the anointing is something that is given. When the anointing is given, it means there's something, there's an office. You represent something more than yourself, somebody higher than you. So who is anointed? Prophets, priests, and kings. Yeshua was all three. Yeshua was a prophet, priest, and a king. As, and it talks about this in the book of Hebrews. This is where we get, Mashiach is where we get Mashiach, which is Messiah. And in Greek, it's Christos. In fact, if you know, you, you always see the word, for, for instance, how many of you have seen the fish? The fish is the early... Uh, symbol of believers. This was the, the earliest symbol of believers, Jewish and Gentile believers. It didn't matter, they would have the fish, because in the Greek, and I need it, I'll, I'll bring this up in tomorrow's study, at the, at the Saturday morning study. I'll write it out there. It says ichthios. It stood for the Greek of uh, uh, of Yesu Christos Theos uh, uh, we, uh, we, it says the, the Yeshua HaMashiach the son of God. And here it is, it's, he's Oz Christos, he's, or, or in English they'll say Christ, in Hebrew we say Mashiach. And it is, it's so important because we always call Yeshua this. What is this? Was Yeshua, Yeshua was not the only anointed one. Others were anointed, but Yeshua was all three. Yeshua was anointed as a prophet, a, pri a, prophet, a priest, and a king. When people even now today we, in traditional Judaism, what they say is they say, we want Mashiach now. They say, we want Mashiach. When things are going bad, they say, we want Mashiach now. But, and it becomes a very, it becomes a prevalent theme. Even among the secular, even the, the ones who are not very religious, they even talk about a messianic age. So some examples of anointings, we had Aaron and his sons. That was in this Parsha. We have Saul, David, and Solomon. All three of them were anointed as were the other kings of Israel. Eliyahu, Elijah was anointed as well. That's who we talked about in the, in the Haftarah Parsha. Eliyahu Hanavi, it says that he will, it talks about how he will uh, come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And we know that John the Immerser, John the Baptist, he came in the spirit of Elijah. He even dressed like Elijah. And this was coming right before Yeshua. And when do we celebrate when do we talk about Elijah? We talk about Elijah during Passover, Pesach. And we say, Eliyahu Hanavi, we sing Elijah the prophet. Because the, and it's, it's really wonderful because we talk about how Elijah is in tradition, how it coming from the book of Malachi, 
is how he's going to come, he's going to prepare the way of the Lord. And we talk about, about Pesach, about Passover, we talk about Elijah coming. That's why there's a lot of, of, of prophecy that's tied in, of, and prophetic language that's tied in with, with uh, Pesach, with Passover. Also, who is the only, just as a little bit quiz, who is the only person who is not from the seed of Israel who was called anointed? King Cyrus, who was from, he was from Persia, he was from Iran. So this is someone here, he, he was the only one who was called uh, uh, Mashiach anointed. And then we're also told, told to anoint the sick. That's amazing because, you know, Yeshua said that he came, he was eating with the sinners and the tax collectors and the Pharisees said, look at Yeshua, he's eating with all these sinners. And they said, why are you hanging out with all these sinners? And Yeshua said, it's the sick people who need a doctor. It's the sick people who need healing, not the healthy people. And so even now, we have the sick. Whether And again, we pray here for the Refuah Shlema, the complete healing of if you have the physical element or the, the spiritual element as well. But it's amazing. These, this anointing that's meant for prophets, priests, and kings is also, is also meant for us when we are hurting, when we are sick, when we are broken. <clears throat> Here's, we see a painting of Aaron being anointed and King David being anointed uh, on the left and King David being anointed on the right. King David was anointed as a child. This is, well, as a child, he was probably t a teenager. But he was not respected. Here's the thing, not when... When Shmuel, when, when Samuel came to, to, to um, Ishai, Ishai, sorry, Jesse, yeah, to Bethlehem, to, to, when he came to Ishai, Ishai is Jesse in Hebrew, he came and he said, where are your, your sons? And he brought out his sons, uh, uh, Abinadab and Shammai, he brought them all out, and he said, oh, wow, look at this, this is my oldest son. He's definitely going to be, he goes, I'm going to anoint one of your sons. I don't know who it is, but one of them. He brings out the oldest one. Look, this, this guy, he's tall. You know, he knows, he knows Krav Maga. He, you know, and he's, and, and, and look at his jawline. Look, come on, that guy's got to be the king. By the way, that's how, they, that's how they chose King Saul. They said, hey, King Saul's just, a, he said, look at that guy. He's tall, so let's choose him as king. And he, he wasn't the best king. But anyway, so he comes over there. No, not him. All right, let's look at the second one. Uh, you know, this guy, he's, you know, he's not like the first one, but he's, all, he's also very strong, and, and he's, he's, he's uh, I, you know, I, I think he's going to be the next king. No, not him. He goes all the way down, and he goes, who is, who here is the king? He goes, there's no one here. Samuel says, I don't understand. God's not telling me that any of these sons are, are the king. He goes, are you sure? And they go, well... There's David. David was an afterthought. Melch David was an afterthought. How many of you feel like an afterthought sometimes? <laughs> well, that was a lot of laughing, so <laughs> probably. How many of you feel like, okay, everyone, they, they go, they look at you, okay, choose everyone, but ah, uh, don't take that guy seriously. Don't take, don't take that, that young woman seriously. Don't take, that, don't take that grandpa seriously. Don't take that kid seriously. Uh, don't. They don't, they don't know what's going on. And he said you know, that God sees, that man sees the outward, uh, the outward appearance, but the Lord sees your heart and intentions. And what everyone saw, David was just, he was the black sheep. He was the black sheep of the family. He just didn't want, he was the outcast of the family. He was the ugly duckling. And everyone said, why do we want... It's funny, I said sheep because David himself compares himself to sheep later on as we're going to see. So David was, was an afterthought. Ah, who cares about Who cares about little David? Who cares about little David? But yet, Hashem saw something in him that everyone else didn't see. And sometimes in our lives, we don't get the credit we deserve. I know there are people 
that work here, or we feel, let me rephrase, sometimes we may feel like we don't get the credit we deserve, and say, that's not fair, I'm doing all these things right, I'm doing all these things right, that, I don't get it, what am I doing wrong? No one notices all the work I'm doing, no one notices all the right that I'm doing, no one is giving me, no one is giving me, yeah, no one's giving me praise. No one. But just like King David, just like Melech David, we don't just say David the shepherd. We say Melech David, King David. Because God had something different in mind. God didn't want him to be a shepherd his entire life. God didn't want him to be in the fields of Bethlehem for the rest of his life. He wanted to, him to be ruling from Jerusalem. And amen? And he will see you too. We say, God's not seeing me. God's not, I mean, you see, people don't see me. But if people don't see you, God will see you. God sees your acts. God sees what you do in, in private. And if you don't do anything, I know that there are people that have come here that have done massive amounts of work. And nobody gives them any kind of credit. I know people that do things elsewhere and ministries elsewhere. And no one gives them any credit. But Hashem sees you and Hashem will give you credit. And Hashem will give you that anointing. And so here he is right now in the fields of Bethlehem. And again, it's not for credit. It's not for this. It's not for that. It's just Hashem will see the work that you do for him. And here no one saw David's valor, but Hashem saw it. And Hashem saw that he was, that David was somebody who could lead Israel. He could lead these sheep and he was faithful as a shepherd so he could lead all of Israel. And this is something it says... Well done, my, thy good and faithful, my good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And Hashem saw that, that King David was an excellent shepherd, and he knew he could be the shepherd of the people of Israel. Let's go. Individuals versus roles. It is so important. Here, I talked about this, how David, even though he was great, we say Melech David, King David, he was not perfect. He, his sin with with having Uriah killed by placing him strategically in the front lines and his sin with Bathsheba was, was, very, was something that we don't ever want to see in anybody's lives that we know. It, just, it was really it was incredibly tragic. And again, they paid for it with Bathsheba's son dying after that. King David had killed so many people that he wasn't allowed to build the Beit HaMikdash the temple. He wanted to build a temple. We would have called it David's temple, but it wasn't called David's temple because he killed too many people. And he wasn't perfect. Near was Moshe Rabbeinu. But the thing that's important is that they had these roles. And you and I have roles that we are given. We have there's us as people, but if you are, I keep on saying Joe, I need another random name. So let's say your name is John, there we go. Let's say your name, so if your name is John, there's Joe and there's John. John might be someone who's really, uh, he might have these personal things about him, but he has a role as a father, or he might have a role as a boss. If your name, let's say you're Mary, Mary has her own idiosyncrasies, but she has a role as a mother, she has a role as a wife, she has a role as a worker, she has a role as a boss. And we have these different roles, and those roles must be respected. As a rabbi, sometimes I'm in that role as a rabbi. Sometimes when I'm talking to someone, I'll say, I'm not talking to you as a rabbi. I'm talking to you as a friend. I'm talking to you as a family member. I'm not, I'm not in my role right now. I'm, telling, I'm talking outside of that role because I'm respecting, I'm respecting this role. Or if I'm talking to another pastor, I'll respect them in that role as a, the pastor or if you're, or if you're just, if you, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, if you're a worker, if you're a boss, we all have these different roles. And Ephesians five and six, I'm not going to get into, but I encourage you to do this: to look at this dichotomy of roles between authority and people who are under authority. It talks about, and it talks about these these symbiotic relationships between husbands and wives, fathers and children, bosses, employees, and how. There is authority, but it should never be abused. There should always be 
care from the authoritative role. There should all be, always be love and care from the authoritative role and respect for that authoritative role. So those roles should be respected by the people who are in those roles and also by the others. That is the ideal. It's tricky in real life. But the point is that they had Moshe, David, Solomon, all these people weren't perfect, but they had a role of king, of prophet, and, and Aharon, of priest. This role was above them. This role was greater than them. Tehillim 23, Psalm 23. It says, Adonai roi the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It says, you anointed my head with oil. So the thing is, David, at that time, he was already anointed. He was already anointed as king. He was already, he, this was almost the same thing as being knighted in a way. And yet, he still, as anointed as a king, he still saw himself as a sheep. Adonai Roi, the Lord is my shepherd. And he still saw that, he says, I'm in authority, but Hashem is in authority over me. Just like I said in the beginning, Tzav. Tzav says command. God commanded Moses to command. All our authority and structure, if you are in a place of authority, whether it is as a, a boss or as a parent, or even if you don't have, even if you're single, you may be, be put in a place of authority or put in a place where there is there's some kind of leverage that you have. Remember, all that authority, all that power comes from Hashem. Even King David, who was the mighty king of Israel, we consider him the greatest king of Israel, compared himself to a humble lamb as did our Messiah, Yeshua. So let's talk about Mashiach, Yeshua. Genesis 3.15, it talks about, I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed. This is right after Eve, Chava, sin, says that I'll put enmity to the serpent. He's talking to the serpent between your seed and her seed. And it says, you will, he will, you will bite his heel and he will crush your head. And so you look at the word for serpent, Nachash, Nachash is serpent. This is the first messianic prophecy in Genesis 3.15. And we look at the, the letters. Let's see if I could get a laser here. Do I have a laser? No, I don't. You look at the, the letters there, and you have the nun, the chet, and the sheen. And I'll go over the, again these in, in detail tomorrow morning. But Nachash, it's 358. And if you look at the letters and if you don't know Hebrew, you just got to trust me on that or find someone that knows Hebrew and say, is Rabbi Brook, is he telling the truth? Yeah, it is. It's 300. Each letter is a number. This is just something. And this is just, this is, it doesn't always match up, but sometimes there is something, sometimes there's a lesson to be learned. Nachash is 358 and Mashiach is 358. The Messiah was there to counter the Nachash, to counter the serpent. So we see... The anointed one, Christos, Mashiach, Messiah, who was the ultimate anointed one? It was Messiah Yeshua. We call ourselves Messianic Jews because we're based off of this. Messianic Jews and Messianic Gentiles worshiping together one in Messiah Yeshua. If the Lord gives you any kind of authority, any kind of anointing, and some people say, well, I don't have my own family. I'm not in charge. I'm not, I'm not a boss. I'm not in charge of anything. Well, he may give you authority when you're talking to a stranger. He may give you authority for someone who needs help from you. So how should we act when we have that authority? Should we just say, I'm in charge, I could do whatever I want? No. Who is the ultimate authority? Yeshua. So when we look at, when Melch David, he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he got that he, he, was, he was the king, but he still saw himself as, as, a, as a lamb. And you look at Yeshua, who's called the Lamb of God. He was the ultimate authority, but he still called himself the lamb. You look at this. He, when he was the authority, he was the Mashiach, he was the ultimate anointed. As a prophet, priest, and a king. All three of them. So how do we act with our authority? Who is our role model? Our role model is Yeshua. So whenever we have authority, we're not saying, I'm in charge. I'm doing this. It's my way or the highway. We say, no. How did Yeshua, how did Yeshua rule? King Yeshua, prophet Yeshua, priest Yeshua. 
How do you do this? And as we go in to this, we're going we're gonna to have a, a quick word on, on the, the death and resurrection, which we're going to talk about during Passover, during Pesach. But it's important to notice that even though the rest of the world is celebrating this, it's fine to reflect on this as well, on, our, on the ultimate sacrifice that Yeshua gave. And we see him, he is the ultimate anointed one. He is the ultimate authority. And we get all of our authority from him. And this authority is something, not only that when, you, when there's an anointing, you don't just, it's not something to take lightly. If there's an anointing upon you, this is something that you, you follow Yeshua, but at the same time, you need to use it. You need to exercise that authority. You can't just sit there and sit behind. Yes, you have to be humble and meek, but weak does not mean, meek does not mean weak. So when you are anointed, when God anoints you in a certain role, when God anoints you for, in a certain path, you can't just sit on that anointing. Nobody ever got an anointing. Once they got the anointing, they didn't just go to their couch and sit there and say, all right, I'm anointed now. I'm anointed, that's it. No, anointing always preceded action. Anointing always preceded action. So when you have the anointing of God on your life, remember what comes next, it's action. So again, remember going forward, Again, our ultimate, the ultimate sacrifice, which the rest of the world is celebrating right now, is, is the sacrifice of Yeshua. Let's remember that he was the ultimate anointed. He was the ultimate Mashiach. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Baruch. Allow me 10 minutes. I know my, my, I come from a generation. My, grandfather, my maternal grandfather was a preacher. My dad was a preacher. He used to preach long. <laughs> and I, I shared this before in the past. So my mom said, look, I'm going to give you a lifesaver. And when you put the lifesaver, when it goes away, you stop preaching. And it worked. It worked. But one time he preached and preached and preached and preached. It went on and on. He said, what's going on here? Well, instead of putting a lifesaver, I put a button in my mouth. <laughs> the word of God is true. Don't think that what's happening in Israel is by accident. We are positioning ourselves for miracles. I had a great opportunity to work for the government of Israel. When Errol Sharon, when he was just a general, he came to Texas and, and there we had conversations. We went to the river and he shared with me time after time and how God did miracles. He actually shared with me how he saw Michael the archangel as they surrounded the Egyptian Third Army in the 73 Yom Kippur War. My heart rejoiced. But this is a time for miracles. Understand that this is a time for miracles. And though people are just despairing of what's going to happen, I'll tell you, God is on the throne. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But when you see that, God commanded the land and it brought forth trees and plants. He commanded the seas and it brought forth fish and animals. He commanded the heavens and it brought forth stars. But wait, without the land, there's, the trees cannot survive and the plants cannot survive. Without the sea, the fish cannot survive. But I noticed when it came to making man, he says, the land do this, he talked to the earth. But then when it came to making man, he says, let us. He spoke to himself. So we're part of the creation of God. Out of all the creations, he spoke to the land, the sea, the heavens. But when making man, he spoke to us. In this particular part, it's, it's command. Though the world is celebrating the resurrection this Sunday, they say this is Good Friday. Actually, we follow the word of God. Are we, am I right? 
And it's okay. Celebrate every day. I say celebrate every day. But the Bible says very clear that Yeshua died on Passover. Passover this year falls April the 22nd. Hmm. So what happened here? Really the true celebration we cannot put by man's calendar, but we put on God's calendar. And that's what we need to understand. Celebrate it, but don't forget the true timing of, it's like I said before, I walked into, I walked into a place one time and they had a cake for me. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday, but let's eat cake. The last, though this is celebrated Good Friday, can I just share with you real quickly the seven last sayings of Yeshua? When I taught at a Bible college, I said seven last words. I said, write the seven last words of Yeshua. So one guy just put actually the seven last words. It's like sayings. The first words that he said was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. The very last words are, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Both of them are addressed to the Father. But remember, the Father forgive them. It, the forgiveness begins with the Father. Then we realize that forgiveness needs a mediator. And third, it recognizes man's condition. We need the Messiah. Can you praise God? The second one, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today, let me I have great news for you. When somebody closes their eyes to this world, they're in the presence of the Almighty God. Today, not tomorrow or a year from now, but today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Then the next words that he says, woman, behold thy son, son, Behold the mother. Have you ever called your mom woman? I tried it. She said, woman, I'd like a sandwich. To woman, get it yourself. You don't call me woman. Is it, that's kind of disrespectful. But why did Yeshua in that moment call his mom woman? This is why. Because, oh my goodness. Growing up with Yeshua, he had Bible study after Bible study. Mom, like a Rabbi Baruch mentioned, Genesis 3.15. Mom, that's you. What? How did this seed? Oh, it says, and the woman. Oh, the, 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 it talks about the woman shall bring forth the seed. The seed is always in the man. The woman. Mom, that's you, Mom. What? Oh, my goodness. The woman is Isha. So when Yeshua was on the cross dying, he looks and he says, Isha. Her mind races back to that prophecy of Isha. And it made that scene a little more, more easy to accept. Isha, behold your son. Then he ends it with love. Son, behold your ima, your ma. Isn't that wonderful? This is a God we, we serve. And just in parentheses, let me just tell you something what the Talmud says. Rabbi Brook was saying that King David was rejected. Yes, he was. Oh, he, he's in the back. He's a black sheep. But the tradition holds, you know, when a man and a husband and a wife are together, it's sacred before the, the presence of God. But he says in Psalms 51, in sin, I was conceived. <laughs> oh, people have had difficulty in sin. But Jesse and his wife were together. But tradition holds that Jesse had a little fling. He fooled around a little bit. That's why he was rejected. In sin, I was conceived. Oh, my goodness. This was taught to me by one of the rabbis in Israel. Yes, that's why he was rejected. So it's wonderful to know your mom and your dad. But for those of you even looking online, if you don't know your dad or your mom, or perhaps it was out of, wedlock that you were conceived, you still can make it in life. You still can become a prince as a queen and a king for the kingdom of God. Can you praise the Lord? <laughs> but then he goes to, I thirst, showing his humanity. He, he the man that created, the God that created the waters, he says, I thirst, showing who he was. Then he, then he goes on to say, um, I'm trying to, Eli, Eli, lama sabakani. That, that's wonderful. And, and, and he, could, he doesn't say, Psalm 22, it says, Eli, Eli, azabakani. Is there a misprint? No. Both of them mean, I will 
uh, why have you forsaken me? It's just a different way of saying it. But when he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, oh my goodness, that's Matthew 22. He's, you race back to Genesis 22 when Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac. God shall supply a lamb. But he supplied a ram. Oh my goodness. But then he said that the ram was caught in the thicket. You know how to say thicket in Hebrew? Sabak. Oh my goodness. So when he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabakani, he says, I'm the lamb that Abraham was talking about. Can you praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. And then when he said, it is finished, what was finished? The work. No one could make the claim as we as believers that their Messiah rose from the dead. There's an explosion going on all over the world. People are looking in all this turmoil and all this conflict. They're looking for a Savior. And I'm telling you, that Savior is Messiah Yeshua. That is his name. Even in Ukraine, we have Ukrainians here. They, people, she saw us online. And they came, we helped the Ukrainians. She, from Ukraine, she came all the way here. And you saw her and your children are here. We have people from Iran. Stand up. Or from Iran. We have more people coming from Iran. We have different people coming from all over. Homan was persecuted because he was preaching the gospel. He was placed in a box. And they tried to kill him. But Homan, God has another plan for you. He has a better plan to preach the gospel of Messiah Yeshua. You are the anointed of God. And then your wife and your, your daughter came later on. They were persecuted. They were beat up because they believed in Messiah Yeshua. But praise the Lord. Thank you. But my Messiah also, thank you so much. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. But the explosion that's happening all over the world, it's not a question of or not it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's whether you want to participate in it. So as the Bible says, celebrate my feast, I encourage you, celebrate Pesach, celebrate Shavuot, celebrate uh, Sukkot, celebrate all the feasts of God, and blessing will come to you. The word of God in the book of Zechariah chapter 8, the very last, he says, and ten men shall get hold of the, the, the strings. That's a seat seat. Ten men. Why does it say ten? Ten is a picture of a minion. It's a picture of humanity. So it says, Tom, let us go with you. Because that we have heard that God is with you. What is God is with you? Emmanuel. So it's talking about the Messianic Jews. There's an explosion taking place. A lady, our sister from Ukraine, she said, they start a congregation, and Jews from all over Ukraine are coming to accept Messiah Yeshua. There's over two thousand people in their congregation before the war. This is just the beginning. The Bible says that in Yeshua, the very last words he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Then he said, he bowed his head and died. In the original language, it doesn't, it doesn't jerk. It, doesn't just it says he bowed his head slowly, like a person putting their head on a pillow, and he died. But that was on the particular day of, of the crucifixion. But three days later, oh my goodness, three days later, there was an explosion on the earth. People rose from the dead. The angels were singing because not even death could hold back our Savior. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. The proclamation that the early believers would give, he is risen. And they would answer, he is risen indeed. Can we stand? Can we have our praise team come over? If there's somebody here or maybe somebody online and you're doubting your walk with the Lord, this is a time to come to his salvation. Seven last words. Actually, it's beautiful. We have old teaching that coincides with the seven sayings, the seven days. But something took place when you met the Messiah. I know that it, he changed my life. He changed my life completely. One word, I want one word. What happened when you accepted Yeshua? 
Somebody shout it out. Explosion. Anybody else? Free. Forgiveness. Freedom. Transform. What else? Give me some words. Opportunity. Joy. And if you're listening online, you heard all these people, you've never accepted Yeshua, today could be that time. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Messiah Yeshua, and believe in your heart that God has raised her from the dead. God has raised her from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. I believe. I believe. I believe. We're about to be dismissed. Let's spend some time in prayer. Just like Yeshua called Barabbas, Come out of this tree. Come. Stand before me. If there's somebody with a special need, a petition, stand right here. Or perhaps you've never accepted Yeshua. This could be the day. As the world celebrates something, it's good. But let's celebrate his resurrection. Can we come? Stand. If you have a petition, if you have a prayer request, stand. Now, don't come if you don't believe. But if you really believe for a miracle, an answer petition. Do y'all believe? With all your heart, you believe. Step forward and receive your salvation. Step forward. Come on. Come on. My beloved is the most beautiful my thousands and thousands
wonderful Shabbat, wonderful Shabbat, and whatever, whatever happened, we had, we had three different teachings tonight from Boley, from me, from Rabbi Roy, and I hope that something from one of the teachings really came and, and touched your heart, and something, and Hashem was able to speak, speak to you through one of the teachings, and, and again, it's just so wonderful to be here. I was, I was telling my wife how being in ministry, there's always these curveballs that I don't always talk about up here, but as, but it's just so wonderful. I mean, anyone who's in ministry knows that there's curveballs. Anyone who's, who's in ministry will tell you that. But I was just saying, it's just the, pe- the people here are just so wonderful. And so, and it's just, it's really a blessing. And, and I really feel blessed to be a part of this family. So again, I hope you could feel blessed to be part of this family as well. And if you don't know us that well, uh, it's a pretty good family to be a part of. Amen? Amen. So. Amen. So. Uh, grab a bite. If you're here, you could stay here a little bit uh, more. Again, we have service tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the chapel upstairs. We have service at 2.30 back here. So the, the chapel upstairs, you just take the stairs up there. The 2.30 here with Gil. Wonderful. Uh, we're going to have some wonderful services, some more teachings from Dr. Bully and from Rabbi Gil and, uh, and myself as well. And it is, it's just, it's very wonderful. I do want to recognize before we move forward real quick, uh, Chuck, can, so can Chuck, can you raise your hand a little bit? That's Chuck right there. I just want to say thank you because the ho- again, I was saying the Hoffmans, the, they, they, they do a lot. They did this, but Chuck was, I believe he, you were the, the, the mastermind behind that. You're the planner, the, the Betelel, the guy in charge. It is, is him and, and Will who are doing it. And yes. Oh, yeah, oh, wonderful. So thank you again so much, Chuck. Thank you. <laughs> and again, thank you for Lisa, who is also helping out a lot in the project as well, and and who does so much more. Baruch Atad and I, Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Borei Peri Hagahafen, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe, who creates the fruit from the vine. Amen. This goes back all the ways to the, all the way to the days of Melchizedek, who had the cup and the bread. All right, let's see. Can I fit this without dropping it? I don't know. Can you hold hold the mic real quick? Baruch atah Adonai hinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem in haaretz. Amen. Bless you, Lord God, King of the Universe. Who brings forth the bread from the earth and the bread of life, which is Yeshua? It smells delicious. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. Mrs. Hoffman. Ms. Lisa. Yes? Okay. So uh, tonight we're having ONEC, and I want to thank the people that they get involved in helping us with ONEC. One of them is Ms. Gail. I don't know if she's here, and also Ms. Sarah. She's a great cook, they're chef, they're wonderful. And as we, because we're approaching Passover and Pesach, we don't eat anything that has leaven in it. What we're going to do next week, we're going to have pasta, okay, Italian. So if you have pasta in your house, just get rid of it because we're approaching Passover. And I also wanted to say that um, I was decorating the tables today for the weekend, Shabbat and the weekend. I have um, uh, Victoria and uh, Miriam helping me with the tables. We're going to try to eat there, but keep them nice because they're going to use them through the weekend, okay? So be tender, be watching the kids, okay? Shabbat shalom.
think of snacks. It's a rite of benediction. <laughs> All right, if you're gathered together with anybody next to you under your tallits for our final blessing this evening, our birchat hakoanim, our ironic benediction. Okay. Yivrecha <laughs> Adonai Vayishmarecha Yaher Adonai Panavelecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.